Now let us start with reading 58 of study session 16 which is introduction to measurement of interest rate risk. As we know if the interest rate rises the price of bond falls. So that is the risk which the bond holder has to bear. So let us click into the measurement of the interest rate risk. In this topic we will distinguish between full valuation approach and the second approach which is based on duration and convexity. We will demonstrate the price volatility characteristic for option free bond or callable, prepayable or puttable bond when the interest rate is changing. We will further define the positive and negative convexity and their relationship with the bond price and the yield. Then we look at the concept of effective duration for the bond in order to capture the impact of interest rate risk. We will also calculate the approximate percentage change in the bond price relative to the effective duration and change in yield. Then we will distinguish between the alternative definitions of duration for example modified duration, effective duration etc. and we will understand why the effective duration is the most appropriate measure of the interest rate risk for the bonds which have embedded options within them. Then we will learn to calculate the duration of the portfolio when we know the portfolio's individual bonds duration we understand the limitations of the portfolio duration. We will also understand the convexity measure for a bond and we will notice how this concept helps us to understand the change in price with respect to change in interest rates. We will try to differentiate between modified convexity and effective convexity. Then we will calculate the price of bond changing due to one basis point change in interest rate and finally we will discuss the impact of yield volatility on the interest rate risk of the bond. So let us start. The first approach is full valuation approach. In this we calculate the actual price of the bond after changes in interest rate. So this is also called a scenario analysis So this takes care of both parallel and non-parallel shift in the yield curve. So for example earlier this was the yield curve and there is an interest rate rise but it may be parallel or may be non-parallel. Suppose this is the new yield curve. So we will put all these values of different interest rates in the bond valuation formula and calculate the final bond value. So using this full valuation approach we will reach the actual price change in the bond and we will be able to measure exact interest rate risk. But for that we need to have the values of these shift in the yield curve. The second approach is simpler. In this approach we are assuming that there is one time parallel move in the interest rate and in order to understand the impact on price we look at the concepts of duration and convexity. We will look into these ideas in detail in the subsequent slide. Let us understand the relationship of interest rate and the price of the bond. For example this is a yield curve for an option free bond. Suppose there is no option embedded in the bond. So This is representing how the bond price is responding to change in interest rate. So on x axis we have yield to maturity or the interest rate. On the y axis we have price as percentage of par value. So at YTM equal to 5% the price was P1. Suppose the interest rate rises to 7%. We can see on this curve the value of the bond, price of the bond falls to P2. So price fall as yield increases and if we look at the shape of this curve it is convex towards the origin. 
that says the slope is not constant. So as we move towards the origin, as the interest rate falls, the slope of the curve rises. Or in another words, we can say for per unit change in interest rate, the change in price becomes higher as we are closer to origin. So we can write it down here for lower interest rates price change per unit change in interest rate is higher. So this is nothing but the slope of this curve. We also call it duration. So we can say for lower interest rate duration is higher, for higher interest rates duration is lower. Okay. So if we try to simplify this curve, instead of curve if we have a straight line, we can say that duration is same everywhere. So now for lower interest rate or higher interest rate, our duration is same. So price change per unit change in interest rate is same. So no convexity here. Now let us look at the idea of convexity. See convexity is the second derivative of this curve. That is change in duration with interest rate or yield. So we can write the convexity is change in duration per unit change in interest rate. So we can say that this is second derivative of the price. Since the duration is first derivative of price, this is second derivative of the price. Now let us look at a special case of callable bond. We know if the interest rate falls below a point, the borrower can call the bond at a predefined price and it can fund this activity from some other source since the interest rates are lower. So we can see here if the interest rates are falling, the borrower is going to call the bond. So price of the bond will not rise beyond a point and that point is call price. The borrower will not allow the bond price to rise beyond that. As soon as it tries to touch the call price, the borrower will call back the bond. He is going to buy it from the investor at this price. So this is the ceiling. It cannot cross this level. And that is why the shape of curve changes. So this is our new curve. So instead of the positive convexity or convexity towards origin, it moves away from the origin or it becomes negative convexity. Or in another terms, we can say the slope is falling again. Here we have seen the slope was rising. But beyond a point, slope again starts falling and become horizontal. As the interest rate was falling, the slope was rising till a point or we can say duration was rising, slope was rising, here it was horizontal, here it is vertical to an extent but beyond a point it starts falling again and become horizontal. So this is our call price. So this is the case of callable bond where we have positive convexity on the right hand side and negative convexity on the left hand side. 
Now similarly we can see the case of puttable bond. See the case of puttable bond where it is less interest rate sensitive. As we know that the benefit of put option in the bond goes to the investor. So that is why when the interest rate is rising the price does not fall as much as was supposed to fall. So the slope is lower. So this difference can be called as the value of put option. So this is the curve for a puttable bond. So as we can see as the interest rate is rising, price is not falling as much. Slope is slightly lower. Now let us look at some other measures. So our basic objective is to find out a relationship between change in interest rate and change in price. As we know from the curve that the price of bond will fall if the interest rate is rising but the relationship is not linear it is convex and in some cases where the option is embedded it could be negatively convexed. So in order to capture this relationship we have certain parameters. One of them is effective duration. So to find out duration let us look at the definition. The duration is approximate percentage change in price for a hundred basis point change in the rates. Since we know that the relationship is not linear so at any point percentage change in price for 100 basis point change in the interest rate is going to be different. So like this slope is going to be different for some other slope. So how do we measure the duration? To address this issue we have the concept of effective duration in which instead of looking at change at one side we look at the change on positive side as well as negative side. So we will see price if yield declines by some percentage point then price change if yield increases by certain points so on both sides on right hand side when the interest rate rises and price falls and on the left hand side when the interest rate is falling and the price is rising divided by 2 since we are taking the price change in both the directions into initial price since the percentage change is going to be captured and change in yield in decimal. So that will give us the effective duration. So using the concept of duration if we want to find out what is the percentage change in price with respect to certain change in the yield we can just multiply by the duration and the negative sign represent that if the change is positive in the yield price is going to be falling. So for a rise in the yield price will fall for a fall in the yield price will rise. So that is the significance of negative sign here. Now let us look at some other variation of this concept of duration. Another parameter is modified duration. We calculate modified duration as this is weighted average of duration. We call it as Macaulay duration. This is nothing but the weighted average of present values of different cash flows multiplied by the time period at which these cash flows are given divided by price and k is nothing but sum of these numbers which is number of payments per year and this Macaulay duration is divided by 1 plus yield divided by k where k is the number of payments per year. So this is how we calculate modified duration. Again modified duration also captures the same idea as the effective duration which is yield changes as per the market and its impact on the price change. So this is very useful measure for the bonds where we have embedded options in them. Again the Macaulay duration formula is given. It is a weighted average of cash flows and durations. These are the durations and these cash flows are basically working as weights to these 
durations. So it effectively it becomes the weighted average of durations. Now let us look at the concept of duration in the context of portfolio. Here we look at the concept of duration in the context of portfolio. So if we have to calculate the interest rate sensitivity of a portfolio or how does the price of a portfolio or value of a portfolio is changing with respect to change in the yield in the market. So we can just calculate the duration of individual bonds and we can take the weighted average of the duration of these bonds in order to find out the duration of portfolio. So this is DP which is duration of portfolio is nothing but the weighted average of duration of the different bonds and weights will be given by their respective weights in the portfolio itself based on their values. But there is a limitation to this parameter which is there must be a parallel shift in the yield curve. We are assuming that all the bonds are going to respond in the same way to a particular change in the interest rate. That is the duration is responding in the same way or there is a parallel shift in the yield curve. So interest rate change. So if this was the yield curve in the starting there is a parallel change in the yield curve. So interest rate or spot rate at different maturities is showing the same change. So if the assumption is true then we can calculate portfolio duration more accurately. Now let us move to the next parameter which is the convexity. As we already seen that convexity is the second derivative of the price or it is the change in the duration per unit change in the interest rate. So it is measure of curvature that is another way of saying it. It is measure of curvature of price yield curve. So the more curved it is more is the convexity. Convexity of a straight line is zero. It is slightly higher and in this case it is even higher. So the more curved the price yield relation is the greater is the convexity straight line has convexity of zero. So if we are measuring the interest rate risk or the change in price due to interest rate change only based on effective duration we are going to underestimate or overestimate the value of the bond. Since we know it is represented by a curve the slope at one particular point is going to be inaccurate measure. So we are either underestimating or overestimating the value of the bond. So if we have to incorporate the impact of convexity we need to make a adjustment. So this convexity adjustment to a percentage price change is going to be convexity into which is the second derivative into change in yield squared into 100. So if we have to look at the total price change with respect to certain change in the yield for duration as we have already seen we just multiply the change in yield by duration negative sign represents the opposite relationship plus convexity into change in yield squared into 100. Since it is a second derivative we have to just square it and which will give us total price change which is including the impact of both duration and convexity. Now let us look at the another parameter to capture this relationship between interest rate yield or market yield and the price of the bond. This is present value of a basis point. This is the absolute value which is change in the price of the bond. Earlier we were talking about percentage change in the price where we are talking about the duration we were looking at the percentage change in the price of the bond but in the case of present value of basis point we are looking at the change in the price of the bond in absolute dollar terms for one basis point change in the yield. Again it is a parameter which is measuring the same impact. So present value of basis point is the initial price minus new price when the yield is changing by one basis point. So here we are measuring the impact in absolute dollar terms unlike earlier where we are looking at percentage changes. Now let us move to the last concept which is the impact of yield volatility. So far we were looking at behavior of bond price with respect to a change in yield. 
but if the yield is very volatile that is changes are very frequent that will have another impact on the bond price so if we keep everything else constant higher is the coupon rate higher is the price volatility of the bond so there could be two ways in which the price of a bond gets changed one is due to interest rate change or yield change we measure this based on duration and convexity and the second factor which can impact the bond price is change in yield volatility so if we keep everything else constant higher is the coupon rate lower is the price volatility of the bond price change is going to be lower since the duration is lower and higher is the yield level lower is the duration as we have seen in the curve itself the slope is lower when the yield is higher but there's another factor which is contributing to interest rate risk which we have seen here which is change in yield volatility so if the expected yield volatility is higher then the interest rate risk is going to be higher for that given duration so assuming that first factor is constant is being captured by the duration change in yield volatility also is contributing to the interest rate risk so there are certain frameworks such as value at risk framework which can capture the impact of both of these factors it ties together the price sensitivity of a bond and yield volatility since the bond price is sensitive to both interest rate changes and yield volatility we have a framework of value at risk which combine the impact of both so that brings us to the end of this topic let us take a few examples